To me also one of the things that drew me, Amistic, was the subtleness that he tries to improve people. Never in crazy drastic ways. Where, you know, oh, Rebbe, you ask him for a bracha. Maybe you should try learning for 15 minutes a day. Well, 15 minutes a day. So I remember that, you know, it wasn't in the beginning, it was a lot easier to get in. So between my first visit and maybe my second visit, because I was dealing with somebody in the family at that time, right. that we, you know, that I was constantly, I was, I was nudging him, I know that. So he asked me, so how's the learning going? So I said, yeah, yeah, Baruch Hashem. So he said, but you missed three days this week. Right, that's you right. You know, so th that was like direct key, like, yeah, I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> so, you, you know, in the beginning when you're caught, there's no hiding. Right, you like in shock that he knew so, exactly how many days. He knew exactly, you know, and, and when or you how said, long so, you learned. Or so, like in the beginning when I used to try to, he came in through Yitzhak and he says, so how is Yudav Melech with a minion today? I said, yeah. So he says, what do you mean? You came in after Ashray and you left before Lenu. <laughs> so right. which part of menu were you there for? <laughs> right. I said, Kedusha. <laughs> so he says, so he's still idle. And he says, all right. But at least, you know, you know, it's like when you come home and you keep telling your kids, don't take from the candy. And every right. time you come in, you didn't catch him with his hand in, but the cookies are all over. You know, it's the same thing. So Baruch Hashem, for me, it became a lot of the things is second nature. The things that we saw is tremendous. Well, what you see, in other words, obviously he knows it. I mean, he he's, knows he's it. getting information from Shemayim. Yes. That means Hashem How, knows yeah, it. Yeah, Avada. I mean, right. I, it's funny you say that because I once was helping out in the office. I, I don't know if you were in or out or I was covering for you. But there was an Israeli, he was borderline, he was, he was officially from, right. he was in contracting, he was in, he, in, he came and he was crying for Parnassah. And he was talking to me, so how do I know he was in contracting? Because he was talking to me when he was in the, you know, I do electrical work. Right. So he was talking to me when he was in the waiting room, we have to try to appease people, to keep them calm and sane. Right. So we try to make small talk. And he was, oh, you're okay, he's telling me his, all his fun stuff of business and how things are going great. And everything like that, and I was telling him I do electric and everything. So he got talking to me. So I remember that he was complaining about Parnassah. And Rebutzel turned to me and says, Shabbos. Shabbos. So he says, What do you mean? I'm keeping Shabbos. He says, Yeah. He says, Yeah, you're having a Shabbos suit? He says, Yeah, we're sitting at the table. And he says, Yeah, and the iPod's under the table. <laughs> right. So the guy had to be murdered. I mean, there was no, you know, it was clear. He was telling him what he was doing at the house. Right. When, you know, when Shabbos officially, he says he was doing. Right. So, I, I was in the room at the time. He says, he says you think you're, you're not fooling me. I'm a fly on the wall. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees everything. Right. I see what I have to see in order to help you change. If you're Makabal to be changed, you'll see Yeshua. If not, not. And that's what I found a lot from when I was when I had this course of helping out in the office and I was bringing in people, more, I don't know if 9 out of 10, actually 8 out of 10 would be honest about it, but a lot of the things that they come back with, or negative feedback that they'll say, is because they weren't, they weren't willing to listen to the truth. They couldn't accept it. They couldn't the accept truth. it. Meaning to say, you know, you go ahead and you, you want Rabbi Yitzchak to come in and, 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 and swoop the day and you have to sit back and just, you know, Rebbe, send me a lot of numbers. I want to make a mega. I, I want to have no problems. I want to have no. Why? That's not always the way. What are you supposed to do? What happens after you win the lotto? How does your life change? Right. Are you a change? So you have to change. People don't want to do the work. They want Rebbe to do the work for them, and then they should take the credit for it. Because we're not going to go into the whole conversation whether or not they'll give them the credit after it happens. That, you know, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, most of the yeah, time. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, they most forget of the about time you. not. Right. Yeah, right. 